Hello! Welcome to Meeple Monday. I am J Word the Word, and I like to play games and spread joy, as I hope you do too. Hopefully my microphone's working. It looked like a second ago it wasn't going to, so I'm giving it a chance. Let it set in. But yes, happy Monday to everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever time it is for you. Thank you for joining me. So if you don't know, I stream games on Monday nights. I do tabletop games where you can play along with me. And then on Friday nights, I do unboxing videos where you can come along and watch as I open new games. And then I also join other people on stream on occasion throughout the week doing different things such as video games, tabletop games, D&D, and other fun nonsense. But today, tabletop, we'll be playing one of my favorite, not roll and write, it's a flip and write, cartographers from Thunderworks Games. Now, this is a simple game of exploring a world, creating the map of the world you have found, and trying to score the most points from what you, what you find. But before we get to that, let's talk about the weekend. Let's talk about our Monday. See how everything went. Give everyone time to show up. So this weekend, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you may have seen posting some new pictures of my shelves right behind me. I spent a good day, day and a half, reorganizing. Now, a collection like this of games, you know it's not an easy task. They all came off the shelf, and I looked at every single game and decided, should I keep it, should I give it away, or get rid of it? And I made a big pile of stuff I'm getting rid of. So eventually I'll end up selling it, trading it, or donating it, or a bit of all three maybe. That's soon to come once I can finish making the list of those games I've set aside. But I do really like what I've come up with here. I've set everything back on the shelves that I am keeping. Made it even with the front of the shelf face so it's nice and clean looking. Now, the top shelf are a lot of the games that have multiple versions of a game. Or they might have multiple boxes because of expansions. And then, what you can't see on camera, bottom shelf, things I need to open. Which I do on Friday nights for you all. And then one half, uh, it's over here, all this half of the shelf to about halfway, about two to three shelves, they all have solo modes, so that's all types of games that I'm going to be eventually trying to play on here. Some are big box games that take a whole table, some are small games like we're playing the game today, but it's a nice variety of different games that have at least a solo mode and then various high player counts, maybe two, three, four, five, six, whatever it may be. But I like to show off the solo modes because that's what I can do right now during a pandemic. I can't always go play with everyone else. But I can show you the games I enjoy playing and how you can enjoy them at home with, either alone or with your family. So that's what I did this weekend. I spent a lot of time reorganizing, setting up. But as the pandemic kind of winds down and we can start visiting people and get vaccinated and be safer to go visit, I still have a decent amount of games over here on this side that I can take with me to game nights to show off to friends and family have fun with and still take pictures for you as well so yeah that was my weekend I also got my second COVID shot so I'm officially recovering from that it didn't affect me too much I know some people talk about the second day is kind of the worst you're in bed all day not wanting to do anything honestly I felt really good I may have slept wrong and I had a little bit of body ache but that's pretty standard for me so I'm not going to blame it on that shot and in general I did what I did do most weekends I spent a lot of time cleaning, reorganizing, taking care of chores doing errands playing a game or two uh, you may have saw that I posted a picture this morning that I tried out a new roll and write game at least for myself it's been around for a little bit Space Invaders Dice kind of the retro arcade style look of the Space Invaders aliens 
and then you're rolling dice and seeing which color A line you can actually shoot. Now, if at some point you pressure can't hit one of the aliens that's actually near the one of the lowest rows on your map, then you miss and you lose a life. You you miss too many times, so you end the game, or you take out all the aliens and you end the game. So you're trying to hit a high score. There's different rules for multiplayer solo. You can play it solo in multiple levels, kind of less life each level. So kind of interesting. I do it's a lot more luck based than strategy. So I say it more as a nostalgia or filler game, but it, it's kind of fun to have on the table every once in a while. But tonight's game, roll, not rolling right, flipping right, is, in my opinion, a lot more enjoyable near the top of my list of games by one of my favorite game companies, to say, as well, um, Thunderworks Games. Because they also make role player, they make uh, Lockout, and they are also coming out with a new game currently. Uh, blanking on the name, Cape May, something like that. I'd have to verify. But yeah, there are certain pre orders on a new game, which is really cool to see because it definitely steers away from the standard um, fantasy realm that cartographers and role player have been in. But. Yeah, so a lot of gaming, a lot of organizing, looking at games. Kate May, that's right. Hello, and how are you today, Kid Spiny? I hope you had a wonderful weekend and a wonderful day. I saw that you also started taking pictures of quests and cannons this weekend, which I'm currently working on my video review of. I don't know if you've played it yet, but... I think y'all will really enjoy that as well with the kids, with all the different modes it has. But yeah, uh, what all did y'all play this weekend and do? And Drunk Physics is here as well. Played Kemet. Nice. I've still yet to try that. As you know, there's a lot of games on the market, so it's hard to play them all. And today we'll be playing Cartographer, so I will be posting a link if you want to, if you don't have the game and you want to play along, there's a link to go get a PDF printed out. So I'll give everyone time to do that. <laughs> Great game, but a few more friends. <laughs> I think it's funny we did, we haven't played it yet, but I was left alone with the game and got camera happy. Yeah, that. Even for a prototype, the game of Crescent Canyons is very nice looking. And I like how it has solo and multiplayer modes, both co-op and competitive. You can play, I believe it currently has at least two player versus AI. They're looking, they're working on the rules for even more AI for the higher level count players. So you have a little bit more combat in the higher player counts. You unbox the new Castle Panic Deluxe with three of the expansions and all the minis. Nice. I think I saw at least a picture you were posting of that. Of kind of the behind the scenes stuff and that looked really cool. Y'all seem to be doing a lot of cool stuff. I, I still need to come visit y'all one day. The last time we tried, unfortunately Allison was sick. But we'll make it work sometime soon. Be great to hang out face-to-face -face with y'all once it's safe to do so again. Let me know if the music is too loud or too soft or how everything sounds. Okay, so you're going to post the video for Castle Panic Wednesday. I'll look forward to it. Go ahead and switch over so you can... Nope. This one. There we go. So we will be playing cartographers today. Uh, this mat, I was fortunate enough that they sent me the mat when I first played cartographers on stream. For one of my first streams, the mat arrived like a day late for me to use it, so I decided I would use it this time. Music, great volume, and Peter's here as well. Yeah, I can't wait for Heroes. This is the mat from Heroes. 
uh, yeah, Chris, charity board gamer, is lucky to already have heroes. Got to play it a couple times on stream with him. But yes, the, the mat does look very nice and wonderful. So it has spots for the seasons and the cards, your explore deck, and skills right there. Right now, I'm just putting the monster stack on the skills so I can shuffle them in. If everyone is ready, or if you let me know if you need more time if you're wanting to try, try to go print. But I think I want to get ready and start playing with y'all. So you got the blue play mat. Okay. I can't remember. Is the blue play mat hero specific or was that cartographer's original specific? And Peter is ready. Great. Now, for if you have not played this before, uh, it's a flip and write, so I'll, we'll be flipping cards. It gives you Tetramino or Tetris shaped pieces in general, but not all Tetris specific, but polyominoes. They're basically squares of different shapes, Z's, T's, and whatnot. And we'll be drawing them in our, on our map. In the main game, you can draw a certain symbol. I like to use colored pencils. This game, we will I will be using the A side of the map. And then if we have time, I'll play the B-side as well for a second game. But let's see what scorecards came out. So I did kind of pick these randomly. as It, it was Cartographer's Blue Mat. Okay, so I think that was the original Cartographer's Mat. So for A, we're going to be doing the Borderlands. So you're gonna, you can earn six points for any full row or column that is fully filled in. So six reputation stars for each complete row or complete column of filled spaces. Now we'll be playing by the solo rules for monsters, but we'll be using the standard multiplayer scoring for the end game. Yeah, sucks early, but the good thing is it comes back around for the last uh, season of scoring. So. A little hard to play as, but we'll make it work. Second, we have the stone side force. So this is connecting mountains. So earn three reputation stars for each mountain space connected to another mountain space by a cluster of four spaces. This one's pretty easy to use. I bet we can get some points pretty early on with it if we play it right. C will be the green gold plains. This is going to earn us three reputation stars for each cluster of village spaces that is adjacent to three or more different terrain types. So it allows us for good variety. And then last but not least is the golden granary. So this will get us three points. Or it reads this. Earn one reputation star for each water space adjacent to ruin spaces and earn three reputation stars for each farm space on a ruined space. I'm so used to thinking about that as three points on the ruined space first and then water second, but it reads the water one as one point and then heard. Thank you, Peter. So, like I said, we're going to be playing the A side of the map. If you don't have the game, uh, the link is in chat. You can tell me if you want me to post it again. It goes to BGG. There's several people that have made printer-friendly maps that you can print off to play with. So we'll be scoring four different seasons. Each season has a cumulative number that we're totaling to. Spring, we'll be scoring A and B. Next season, B, C, and so on. And we'll go over it for each season as we get there. We'll be drawing cards from the Explore deck one at a time, drawing them on our map. So let's see what the first card's going to be. First, we have the Homestead. So the Homestead is either villages or farms. It's kind of the, the short T, but it's turned sideways. You can rotate it, mirror it, however you want. And you can draw it anywhere on your map. Keep in mind, the mountain spaces are already considered filled in. So, what I will do 
How early can we get a straight line? It's going to be the hard thing. Let's go ahead and do... Go ahead and cover that ruin with that farm. Guaranteeing some points for the later seasons. Okay. And that is a total of two for the season so far. So once we hit eight or more is when we score the season. Now if you need more time to draw yours in, just let me know. Otherwise we'll play at a decent enough pace. I try not to draw it too fast so I can talk, and then once I'm done drawing, I typically assume y'all are ready. So we'll move on to the next card. Next we have the Fishing Village. This is either Villages or Water. It's a 1x4. And Kids Planning says they'll be doing a Can Kids Play of this game soon. And we planned on filming it this weekend and didn't get to it. Well, hopefully you get to it soon. I look forward to seeing what y'all have to say about it. And, of course, every all the videos y'all have made are always amazing to see. the produ From production to your thoughts on the games. And the shots themselves are amazing. Fishing Village. Uh, one by four. Red Village or Blue Water. Well, I don't want to block myself too much from the mountains. I think I uh, yeah, will go there. That can do that. Mm, no, I'll actually go village. Attempt to. Mm. These are both tough ones for the first ones to come out. At least for me. To decide easily what I want to do with them. Uh... Yeah, no, let's just get going here in the corner. So, now we're at a total of four for the season. We'll go to the next card. Now, each season we do mix in one of the monster cards, so there is a potential for a monster to show up this season. Once they show up, they are taken out of the deck. Next, we have the Marshlands. It is the Tall T. So, three wide by three tall. It can either be a forced green or a blue water. This map is a little bit harder with the stone side force because there's not quite as many that can um, automatically connect mountains. So yeah, I'm just gonna go here, start working on that mountain and stretch across to the middle here. Hopefully I can fill in more, get at least one complete line by the end of this season. We're specifically suggesting erasable colored pencils because mistakes happen. I agree, mistakes do happen. Now, I know a lot of friends play, will laminate one of the sheets and then use dry erase markers either for stream or just playing in general it, the papers last longer and yeah exactly laminating the card it lasts longer you don't use up all the the sheets and of course it's easy to correct mistakes and the next card is going to be 
a treetop village. Laminating it to cardstock is nice and thick. Great suggestion, Peter. So the treetop village is either forest or red village. It is kind of the elongated Z shape. And if you need a close-up of any of these, just let me know. I know some of y'all have played before and know what these shapes are. So, this will be the last card of the season as well. I agree, like, it, it's cool to see the, the artwork that you make with each game. I have kept each map I've made. I would say maybe laminate once you get down to, like, the last couple of sheets. <laughs> and then so you can keep the artwork, but then you can actually keep playing after you're done. Or go to the printable PDFs and keep printing them. Yep, total is going to be eight for the season, so we will be scoring it. And I don't like what came out at all. Uh, actually, I can make use of it right here. One, two, elongated, three Z. Okay, so now we will be scoring for the round. So, if you have any complete rows or columns, you can score six stars. In the bottom left of your sheet, there's a place for scoring for the season where it says it shows a little A. You can score the A right there. I have no complete rows or columns, so I won't get anything for that. Next up, we have the B, Stoneside Force. So, th three points for each mountain space connected to another mountain space by a cluster of four spaces. Now I made the most out of that last one. Now I actually have one, two, three mountains connected by fours. So that's going to score me nine points, three for each. Now if you have completely surrounded any mountain space, you could have marked that you had a coin in the coin row, and for each coin you have filled in, you'll score a point each round. Or there are some explore cards that you have the option of a shape with a coin that you can fill in the coin row as well. I have no coins. And no monsters appeared, so we have no negative points this round. So I'm sitting at a simple nine points. So if you're playing along, let me know how you're doing in chat while I shuffle up for the next round. So we will be adding one monster card into the deck. Shuffling it up. Six points. Yeah, this is a tougher scoring setup for the beginning first few rounds. Uh, so for those who don't score any or very low, it's to be expected. On average, it is the last round that you'll score the most points because you've had the most time to set up all of your shapes onto the map. So that being spring is done, next we'll be scoring summer, which we'll be scoring B and C. So this time we'll be scoring the Stoneside Forest again, along with the Green Gold Plains. Now Green Gold Plains is for each village space that touches at least three different types. Or so it says adjacent to three or more different terrain types. You'll be scoring three points. Yeah, the A1 definitely is tough early on. But then again, we're all playing for the same score setup, so it's not like we're playing solo, which would really hurt us. Okay, so if everyone is ready, we'll move on to Summer. With the first card being a monster. We're attacked by a goblin. So we're going to use the solo rules for placing the monster. So in this one, you're going to start in the bottom right-hand corner of your map, which is shown on the monster card in this upper corner. It shows you which corner of the map you're going to start with. And you have to draw this diagonal three-shape 
as close to the bottom corner as you can. If it doesn't fit in the bottom right, you move. This shows you move counterclockwise up and around the border until it can be placed, and then shifting inside. Does mountain count for C? Yes, Peter. A mountain does uh, count as a type of terrain. Yeah, so we're not going to play the solo rules for points, just the solo rules for monsters tonight. But yes, playing solo rules for points can be hard, especially with this setup, because there's points on the bottom right of all these that are, get subtracted from your score at the end. Okay, so we're going to have that monster. I'm going to draw it in. So for mine, starting in the bottom right, and then moving up counterclockwise until I'm able to draw it. So that means it has to start right here. Ends up covering my ruin space. I'm doing this. Now for those who have not played before, these monster spaces at the end of a round, if they still have empty spaces adjacent to them. Now, kids playing will love the word orthogonally adjacent. But basically, anything that's not diagonal. Anything that is directly touching one of those squares that is still empty at the end of the round will score you a negative point. So our goal is to fill in those spaces. Nice thing is that once that monster comes out, it can no longer affect it. get us again, so it can only come out once for the game. So we set that aside. And now let's find something better for us. Of course, it's another monster. <laughs> this is going to be a tough game for us, isn't it? So this monster starts in the upper left corner and we'll be going also clockwise around the map until it fits and it is the classic C shape so being that there is nothing in this upper left corner it's automatically going to fit into that corner without going counterclockwise and unfortunately that does cover another ruined space for me so we're likely going to have a lot of negative points this game with monsters showing up this early and this fast spread out. I'm going to keep these visible in these corners so y'all can see what they are. Haha, uh -huh. orthogonally adjacent is a very common phrase in our house. Yeah, with... Because uh, y'all y'all are... Did y'all already do the video on it or y'all are working on it? I can't remember. But... I know that's kind of been a point of contention, like getting into the board game industry and how how often that word those words are used together, but not everyone knows those words. Exactly the weird words of a board game house. Yes. See, I was fortunate being that I am an engineer and studied engineering in college. I've heard those words used together a lot, and so it never threw me getting into board gaming. But I can understand how a lot of people, it throws them and is kind of confusing sometimes. So if everyone's ready, we'll move on to the next one. If there's any questions on the two monsters that showed up, please let me know. I'm going to get a snack as I went. It's in the works. Boys keep asking to do the board game basics. Nice. Well, I look forward to seeing seeing what y'all do with that. Good news is we've had seen two monsters, the only two monsters in the deck, so this won't be a monster. The fishing village again, the one by four. Red village or blue water. Right here. 
Okay, so I'm getting pretty close to filling in this corner around here. Maybe I can work it into a full row for the Borderlands at the end of the game. And that at least blocks one of the monster spaces. So if everyone's ready, we'll move on to the next Explore card. If you need me to wait, just say, hold on, wait a minute. But I'll do it so I'll, I'll keep that card visible as I flip the next one in case you're a, a moment behind and trying to draw it. Because it's harder when you're not at the table saying, hey, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. Next, we have an Outpost Ruins. Now, when we flip an Outpost Ruins, the next card we, I draw has to be on top of an Outpost Ruins. Now, if you cannot do that at all, then... Like the standard rules, if, if you can't place the shape at all in any way, then you draw a one-by-one one square anywhere on the board of any terrain type of your choice. But seeing that I still have ruins available, there'll be at least one space I can draw it. So, we have the orchard. This is the L shape. It is either forest or farms. And remember, it does have to be on one of your ruin spaces. Well, I can make use of this one. And the nice thing about this being the farm is if you think ahead to the golden granary that we'll be scoring for both fall and winter, putting a farm on a ruin will be three points guaranteed for both of those seasons. Okay, and we're currently at a total of four for the season. Next up, we have the homestead again. So this is either village or farms. The short T-shape. And remember, these can be rotated, mirrored, as you see fit, to fit onto your map. And I think my best use is to block off some of this monster shenanigans going on in this upper corner. I'm hoping I can get another color to touch that later. Now we are at a total of six for the round currently. We're looking for a total of eight. So if the next card that shows up is a two, we'll be done for the round. If it's a one, we'll draw another until we total eight or more. Let me know when you're ready, Peter. I feel like sometimes I move on too fast since how much I've played this on the digital app, I got to a point where I could play really fast because I just made decisions faster. So I don't want to go too fast tonight. Next we have up the Hamlet. This is Red Villages. Now you have a choice. You either do the, the short L V shape and you can also earn a coin or you can do the bigger shape. I don't even know what you want to call that one. It's a two by two with a one sticking off of it. I will go with 
Now that was only a total of one, so we'll be drawing at least one more card. I want to fill in... Don't do that. Yep, I want to fill in up here. Just going straight up deal with that monster in completion. And earn a coin as well. So because I chose the one with the coin, I'm going to put in a coin down here on my coin row. So at this point, this monster has been completely surrounded, so it will not be scoring me negative points at the end of each round. This one, on the other hand, still has some that I need to work with. Okay, if we're ready, we're going to move on. Now we have Rift Lands. This is a one by one square of any terrain type that you see on this card. So you cannot draw a mountain in, but you can draw any of the four colors, Green Forest, Red Village, Yellow Farms, Blue Waters, or if you really wanted to, you could draw another monster in. Gets playing and saying is they really like the app. I play it almost daily, but the scoring phase is so slow to me. Play fast with it too, and then twiddle my thumbs waiting for the app to add. Yeah, uh, that is the only downside to the how how it's, they did the scoring on it because it's like it goes through each phase slow, slow, slow. But yeah, when I I haven't played it in a few days because I've been busier. But when I was playing it constantly, I was playing at least 10 times a day easily it was like okay i have five minutes go play a game while i'm waiting on something to happen is there size minimum to see no you can use a one by one uh village space and as long as it's touching three different other terrain types it can still score great question though and with that question and looking down at my board, that's exactly what I'm... Nope, I uh, don't want to do that. I can score that one. That one score. Do I want to score? So what I will do, I'm going to draw in a single blue right here. It's going to help my village score right here. And it's next to one of the ruined spaces helping me score later for the golden granary. And that, since that added zero to our uh, current season, I'm blinking on words tonight, we get to keep drawing cards. And now we have the marshlands again. Either forest or water, large T-shape. This will be the last card of the season. Risk it and do this. Gonna risk covering a ruin space, but it gets me three different blue spaces next to our ruins as well. So it's about the same as a farm on top of the ruins. I'm working and filling in two different rows to rescore on A later, hopefully. Okay, so now we will score for this season. First, we're going to score B. So in the same way as before, any mountain that's connected to another mountain with a set of forest can score you three points. So I still have three mountains connected, another nine points. 
Next up is C. For every red village, every separate red village section that touches at least three different terrain types earns you three points. So up here, this red only touches two, that touches one, this one touches one, two, three, and monsters do count as a terrain type, as long, and mountains as well. So this is one, this one is touching mountains, blue waters, and monsters, so that's the second one. Three points for each is six points. Now I ha currently have one coin, so I get one point for the coin. And now I'll count up the number of, as we talked about, orthogonally adjacent. Any empty square directly next to a monster space is a negative point. So one, two, three, four for me, negative four points. Puts me at what, uh, 15, 16 minus four, 12 points for the round. 16, well done, Peter. Okay, so next up, next season, will be C and D. We're gonna mix all these cards back into the deck. Add one more monster and go from there. So I still have not decided what game I want to play next Monday. So I want y'all to help me decide. Do y'all, do you think I should play another roll and write style game, a dice game, a big large table game? That's a little hard to see in the current view, but almost 50% of my shelf has solo modes in some way. So if there's something y'all want to see played that you know I have, or something you want to try to play along to, a large table game is basically something that would take up my whole table, and I would be lucky to fit it on camera. This camera is... A webcam currently zoomed in a little bit but like this this game mat is a little bit smaller than some game boards I can probably fit a, at most a two by three folding game board but I do have other cameras I can put in details of cards Gloomhaven I could probably possibly do Jaws of the Lion I still need to do that um, I believe Chris the charity board gamer he did message me today, and I believe we will get to play Jaws of the Lion during the next charity stream. So it's kind of that debate, do I want to play that on my own first, or do I want to wait for him for my first experience with Jaws of the Lion? Because I know playing any co-op style game, especially we're, we're having to kind of, not necessarily full-on roleplay, but we have different play styles. I should wait. Okay, that's fine. I will wait to join, play with Chris, because I know we've had a lot of fun when we try to play Kingdom Rush, and so I know the same play style is going to happen there, where he's going to rush into things, and I'm going to have to be methodical planning around what he, I think he's going to be doing. Okay, so we've mixed that next monster in. These two monsters don't go back in, but of course they can still score negative points on us if they're not surrounded. And first card is the Orchard. Green Forest or Yellow Farms, the L shape. Now remember, uh, for C, we'll be scoring C again, which is the red village spaces that connect that touch three different terrain types. And now we're also going to be scoring the golden granary, which will give you three points for each farm on top of a ruins, or one point for each uh, water blue space next to a village, or not village, a ruins. So I have currently, well, we have a chance to draw another farm and I do have another ruins left so I might as well work that into it cover it to 
to guarantee points for that for myself. So now if a ruins comes out at all, I cannot play under a ruin, so I will be, instead be playing a one by one anywhere on my board of any terrain type, but only if a ruins card shows up first. So next card we have up is the Hinterland Strand. This is a card we have not had come out yet this game. It is a big V, big L, however you want to call it. Three by three, turn in that corner, it's either going to be blue waters or a yellow farm. Now this season we're totaling up to seven instead of eight. Currently at a total of four. This right here, work on surrounding my mountain and get next to that ruins. And coincidentally, also helps with getting a full complete row across here. And hopefully everyone is ready. I'll go to the next card. Oh, perfect timing. As I ask, Peter says it. Oh, next up we have the Marshlands again. The Green Forest or Blue Waters Large T-Shape. Which, th this shape is very helpful for trying to complete Borderlands. Because of how much it covers. down and do this area right here. Let's see what shows up next. Okay, so we're currently at a total of six, looking for seven or more. Kids planning is saying, tucking the boys in, loved hanging out with tonight. Thank you for showing up tonight. I really do appreciate it. It helps a lot, especially as I push to get affiliates right now. Um, as I keep the viewership up, it can help push that total above the required needed. I was, I've been sitting at 2.9 average. I need a three average in 30 days. I'm so close. So thank you for showing up. It means a lot. And I always enjoy having you in chat, talking with y'all, learn about what y'all are working on. So I look forward to seeing what y'all release next. So thank you for coming in tonight. And potentially the last card of the round is the fishing village red or blue one by four and this is the last card of the round okay and what i can do with this is enough i'll make it red go here And because I surrounded a mountain, I get a coin. 
And now we can go into scoring. Okay, so for scoring, since we are at a total of eight for the season, which is more than seven, so we're gonna score now. We're gonna start with the C. So for any Red Village area that is touching three different terrain types, we'll score three points. So that's kind of how many I have. I have one, two, three, nine points. And then the Golden Grain Raid, which hopefully we get more points using this. So we get three points for every farm that is on top of a ruin space. And then one point for every blue water that is next to a ruin space. Not diagonal, but ortho orthogonally adjacent. So that's kind of what I have. I'm going to have this ruin has a monster on it. And no blue surrounding it, so nothing. I have one, two, three for that. Three for that, so that's six. Seven, eight. Plus three is 11. Plus three is 14. One blue next to that is 15. I believe that is all of the ruin spaces. Then count up the coins, two coins currently. And then empty spaces next to monsters, I have one, two, three, four still. So nine plus 15 is 24, plus two is 26, minus four is 22. 21, well done, Peter. Okay, and so we're gonna move on to the last season, which will be winter, which will be scoring D and then back to the borderlands of A. So I hope you've been working on completing your rows and columns. We're gonna add the last monster in as well. Yeah, it, based on the points you've been getting, I think you've had a really good game so far. You need a single. I'm guessing you you want a one by one to show up, which if that's the case, I'm guessing it'll give you a row and a column at the same time. So on one hand, I don't want that to show up because we're technically competing against each other, going for the high score against each other. But on the other hand, I want it to show up so you can score that and, and really feel the accomplishment of well planned out. So I want you to do well. So I'll say, make it show up. Let's get a ruined card that we can't use, so then you can make it a one by one. Or we'll just get the one by one card, because then it won't add to the season. Both are good options. And then if it's the one by one, it's a zero, it doesn't add to the season, we can get more onto the board as well. Yeah, currently I have what, one? Oh, yeah, I, I have one complete row. I did not do well with that scoring option. The only thing about shuffling a small deck, if sometimes it feels like you never shuffle it enough, it's like, oh, did I really shuffle it? Because cards are still all together. Oh, you have one, but you could get three. Ooh. Yeah, if you get the three, I definitely can't beat you then. And four long shot. So you have the potential for this one up here. I might be able to fill in two right here if I work it right. I'd have to fill in here and here for these. Yeah, I, I think the potential for mine is reasonably one more. Okay, let's see what we got. No monsters. Hey, there you go. You asked for it. Cartographer's God said it's yours. So take it and make use of it, Peter. Well, like I said, let's make use of it, and I, for sure, will make use of it as well. Guaranteeing me at least one more column. So yes, this was the Rifflands, any one by one of any terrain type, except a mountain, of course. Yeah, so I think with that one card right there, that probably guarantees you the win. Yeah, the forge is looking a lot closer, yeah.
Okay, let's see what comes out now. Treetop Village. So, green forest or the red village and the elongated Z shape. This is where I really ponder all the decisions I made before and why I did them. Yeah, I feel I have to go for broke attempt to get that at least one more row. I'm going to fill it in right here, elongated Z against the monster. At bare minimum, it prevents two lost points from the monster. Okay, so we're currently at two for the season. We're looking for six or more. Let's keep going. And let's say no monsters, no monsters. So we have the Hinterland Stream. Again, it's a farm or water. And the big V shape, whatever we want to call it. Which will put us at a total of four for the round. So the next card could potentially end the round for us. So be mindful of that. is clear. I think I have to do this right here. This is my long shot. Long shot, Peter. You received what you wanted. Now I'm 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 asking for the one by four. Or if it's not the one by four, I need the form one that comes out that gives you the choice of a plus sign or the one by two with the coin. If either of those come out, I can make it to four as well. Let's go for it. Well, that is definitely not what I asked for. So, cartographer's gods shined upon you tonight because this is the orchard green forest or yellow farms the l i do hope that one helped you at least because it definitely did not give me what i wanted but at bare minimum i think i can complete one row with it right here why am I doing it in blue? It's not supposed to be blue. It's supposed to be green or yellow. Let me replace that with green. Okay, then. Let's score up this terrible map I made. Took away a negative. Nicely done. So, first we will score the D, golden grain ray again. Remember, you get three points for every farm that is currently on a ruins and one point for each blue water next to it and so mine should be the same as I did not change anything for, well no I did change it I got one more blue next to it we'll just recount just for everyone's sake monster there nothing one two three four seven eight nine twelve fifteen sixteen and now can score six points 
for every complete row or column when scoring it. So I have one, two, three, for a total of 18 points. Coins, I still only have two. And monster spaces, negative points, one, two. So that gives me a total of 34 points on the round. And then we'll add up the total points for the whole game. 9 plus 12 is 21, plus 22 is 43, plus 34 is going to be 77. That, to be honest, has probably been one of my worst games played of this in a long time. Oh, 39 points for the round. Yeah, you, you definitely took the game. Let me know what your total was, but yes, you, I know you beat me for that one. 82, well done, well done. Five points. I thought it was a little bit farther apart than that, but you definitely beat me, so well done on that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up for the next game, what we'll do, if you have the actual game, tear this paper, turn it over, we're going to play the B side next, which has extra space in the middle of the board already filled in. Those do count as completed spaces. Oh, you have to head out. Well, thank you for showing up tonight, Peter. I really do appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun having you here, as always. And hopefully you can join me next time. Of course. And if there's ever a game you want me to play, show off, if you want to play together, just reach out to me. Because you know I enjoy playing games with you. It's always a pleasure with you. So for anyone else in the chat who is playing along, watching along, thank you for being here. I'm going to take a quick moment to set up the next game. So that means I do have to take out at least one of these monsters. So I'm going to find the monsters from that deck. As only one should be in for the beginning season. Take those. Shuffle up the monsters. And we'll put one back in. I'm going to put one in. The others go there. And then I'll we'll also get more scoring options. Ren was selected and placed. Now, if you want to play along and you don't have the game at home, I'll post a link to a... where you can get a printable PDF of the game. It's found on BGG, Board Game Geek. Many people have created printer-friendly versions of these maps. And of course, I'm using the one that came in the game box itself. But the print printed ones work just as well. Now, I do have friends that like to laminate their copies and use dry erase markers. You can use just a standard pen or pencil, draw in some of the shapes however easiest for you. I do enjoy using colored pencils as it shows up very well on stream for one. And you can set it aside and see the artwork that you've done later. Okay, so those are shuffled. Let's get some more scoring cards out. Now for the scoring cards, they have four different backs. So four different types of scoring options. And you use one of each for each game you play. and But the order you put them in, A, B, C, D, can vary every game. There's no particular order they have to go in. You just decide randomly. Now, because we had this one in A before, I'm going to shift it, put it all the way at D, so we have a better chance of scoring with it this time. We had green pretty early on, so I'm going to shift it down here. I'll shift this one here, do this kind of mix them up so they're a little bit different from the last game. But of course you can do this in any order. I'm going to randomly reveal one of each of these. I'm going to take them, shuffle the, the few different options of each type, and then randomly select one. Okay, there's that one. Now sometimes when streaming, I do like to select very particular 
cards because they're easier to show off or higher scoring points because they're more fun to play with. But for this game, of course, we are going pure random like the game suggests. Now, if you're interested in owning a copy of this game and you do not already own it, I would recommend either going online to Thunderworks Games, I believe it is thunderworksgames.com, where you can find this game, Cartographers, you can pre-order Cartographers Heroes, Role Player, and I believe they've just started their pre-orders or starting pre-orders really soon for Cape May, which Cape May is one of their few games that does not fit in with the standard fantasy realm that most of their games are in, but it still looks beautiful. Now, if you can, if you don't like to order online and would prefer to pick up a game in person, go down to your local friendly game store, ask them about it, see if they have it, pick it up from them, or see if they can order it for you. Okay, so let's go over the four different scoring options. This game I'll probably play a little bit faster than the last game. Just show it off now that we know the majority of the rules and we know what we're doing. A scoring option is going to be Mage's Valley, where we can earn two reputation stars for each water space adjacent to a mountain and earn one reputation star for each farm space adjacent to a mountain. B, we have the Wild Holds. And you earn eight reputation stars for each cluster of six or more village spaces. So that's each different or separate v village sector that has at least six spaces. The tree towers for C is earn one reputation star for each four space surrounded on all four sides by filled spaces or the edge of the map. So the edge of the map, the mountain count is surrounding it. Now it does say the four sides, so the orthogonally adjacent and not diagonals. D, we have the broken road. This is one of the fun ones that you can score a lot of points with. This is for each diagonal row. So earn three repetition stars for each complete diagonal line of filled spaces that touch the left and bottom edges of the map. So if you start in the bottom left corner and do that one by one space in that very corner, that's automatically three points for you. And so the suggestion for this style of game is building from build in from the bottom left of your map if able. We're going to play this one pretty fast. We've already mixed in one monster back to spring. We're looking for eight or more for the total for the season. We're going to be scoring A and B first. So let's get moving on that. I think we'll play pretty fast. Once I'm done filling it in, I'll probably go and move on to the next card. Keep the most recent one revealed, and we'll move on from there. So first we have a Temple of Runes. That means the very next card will have to be placed onto a temple unless it is a monster. Only monsters do not go on temples automatically. So we have a Forgotten Forest where you have two different options. You can either go a diagonal of two and earn a one coin automatically or the, the classic Z shape. Now whichever one you pick, it will have to be placed on a Ruins. Now, I do like the option of getting a coin this early in the game because that guarantees me extra points. So I'm going to take the option of the coin plus the diagonal. And since it has to be on a ruined space, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's do... I choose this one right here. My plan is I'm going to come right up here next the border. This will help me in two ways in that I'm already working on surrounding using the edge of the board that mountain or that forest space and I'm working on a diagonal from left down. Next up we have the rift lands. This is a one by one of any of these five terrain types either monster, forest, village, farm, or water. This can go anywhere on the board. And like I've talked about, that bottom left corner is a very nice place to put 
something like this. And considering if you're going to try to fill it in, making it a green isn't a bad idea. But I think what I'm, I'm going to go risky, a little bit more risky, and go for the long game. Since I know we're scoring these two to begin with, I'm going to go with a water. And go ahead and place that water right next to the mountain. Guaranteeing points for that this round. Next up, we're going to have the hinterland stream. That is the big v-shape and remember these can be rotated and mirrored in any way you like it's either farm or water and this is probably the most useful for one that could have been come out right now for the planning ahead phase i'm going to put it in this bottom corner make it blue so at least one side touches that mountain with some points. And with that one piece, I have completed three diagonals. Okay, we're currently at a total of three for the season, looking for eight or more. Next up, we have marshlands, green forest, blue waters, large, tall T shape, three wide three tall stem being one wide again this is a pretty powerful one to pop up already as I can use it to start surrounding the mountain this will do a couple of things for me this is two more waters right next to a mountain. Along with completely surrounding that mountain, adding a coin to my hold automatically. Currently we are at a total of five for the season, looking for eight or more, so let's keep going to find our treetop village, the elongated Z and green forest or red villages. Gonna be a little bit harder to complete, but I'm gonna go with red, the red village. Get that Z right into this nook I've created. And hopefully, I can get at least one more red to touch that for the season. Total of seven, looking for eight or more, so we keep moving. Flip the next card. This is an outpost ruins card. So again, the next card will have to be placed on a ruins. Unless it's a monster, which it is not. It is indeed a fishing village. This is the 1x4, either red village or blue waters. And it must go on a ruin space. What I'm going to do, I'm going to place it up here to one by four, and that'll let me touch two mountains while being on a ruins. And that being brings us to a total of nine for the season, so we'll score for the season now. So, first off, we're going to score the Mage's Valley. So, this gives us two points for every water next to a mountain and one point for every farm next to a mountain. I currently have one, two, three, four, five, six waters times two is twelve. Next up is the wild holds. For each grouping of six or more villages 
or six or more village spaces can all connected together then you can earn eight points my village only has six or five needs six so it does not score it's a zero total up your coins two for me no monsters came out so there's no negative points yet zero on that so a total of 14 for the round that's going to finish off spring i'm going to shuffle in one additional monster and we'll get to move on to the next season So if you're playing along in chat, do let me know how you're doing. What kind of scores you've got going on right now. How your day's been. If you're enjoying the music, if you prefer a different type of sound. I do use pretzel rocks. Just using the standard stations. With the no uh, voices. Uh, so it's basically instrument only it is also YouTube safe music so I can post this later to YouTube so if you want to play along test your your abilities to play this game at a later date see if you can beat my score with using the exact same setup you can do that as well you can find me at play games spread joy with Jaybird the word for YouTube you can also find me at Jaybird underscore the word on Instagram and Twitter I post daily pictures of games I play and learn about. I like to photograph the different components and talk about the games in different ways on Instagram. Daily posts over there. Twitter I'm not on as often, but there's still some announcements of things that go on as I stream also with the charity board gamer and doing charity events with him. So let's see what comes up next now we will be scoring B and C this round so we're going to be adding in the tree tower so each green force space that is completely surrounded on four sides will be scoring it almost feels like this playlist only has a couple of songs in it so if y'all want to hear something else just let me know first card is the great river first time we've seen this you have two options here you either have a one by three with a coin or you have the special stepped w style shape both of them would have to be water whichever one you pick Here's where I start playing the long game. Hopefully I can complete some more diagonals along the way. So I'm going to start working on surrounding another mountain. Right here with a W. If anything, that's going to guarantee me four points the end of the game. Hopefully I can connect the diagonal all the way up. Next up we have the homestead. Red villages or yellow farms. It is kind of the, the short T style shape. And add it right here to this little sector right here, guaranteeing that one village can score at least once for me. Now we're currently sitting at a total of three for the season, looking for a total of eight. We have plenty more time. And let's keep moving. Next up we have the farmland. This is the one by two with a coin or a plus sign of farms.
So I think I'm going to choose the option that gives me a coin. And I will go ahead and place it right here, surround the mountain. And that's going to net me two coins for that one shape. One for surrounding the mountain, one for picking that shape. So I'm going to fill in the coin, the shape choice one for surrounding the mountain. And next up, we have a ruins card. So the next card we draw will need to be on a ruins again. This is going to be the Forgotten Forest. It is the two-piece diagonal with a coin or the Z-shape. We've seen this already before. It will have to go on to a ruins. Hopefully it does not ruin your plan. To me, I think I can make the most of it by placing it here and working on my diagonals. So that was on a ruin right there next to the mountain. And so we're at a total of one, three, four, five for the season, looking for eight or more. And we have our one by one rift lands any of these shown ter terrain types even a monster if you so chose but you might score more points if you didn't choose a monster right now so here's what i'm going to do I'm going to choose to place, well, I want to fill in this one, one by one right here. I'm going to make it green. So that guarantees at least one completely surrounded green for my tree tower scoring in a minute. So currently we are at, still at a total of five for the season. Next up we have another Temple Ruins with the fishing village, a one by four, red village or blue waters. And I only have two ruins left. So it has to go on at least one of those. I'm actually going to choose to cover both. It's a risky way to play, but what this does is now for two rounds, anytime those ruins come out, I will instead be drawing a one by one terrain type of my choice anywhere on the board. So it means I'll be drawing less shapes or less large shapes, but I'll have more control where I put them. So we're currently at a total of one, three, four, five, plus two is seven. We're still looking for eight or more, so we keep going. And we found the marshlands again. Our large T-shape of green forest or blue waters. And what I'm going to do with it, I'm going to use the blue waters right here, surround a mountain. You get a, point, a coin for the mountain. Now it's your choice. Sometimes I will cross out a mountain to show I've already taken the drawn the coin for it, just as a reminder. But there's no need to have to do that every time okay so that does put us over the eight value so we're going to score both b and c at this point in time so first off any village complete village of eight or, or of six or more total touching village pieces can score eight points and i have one of those right here so that's an eight point for that and now we have the tree tower 
one point for each of your drain floor space that is completely surrounded on four sides. Let's start up here. There's two open, one open, one open. These spaces right here count as filled in, so this one right here counts. This counts and this counts, so that's only three points. This is a little bit harder to score on. You don't typically get as many points with it unless you focus full on on it. So that's up to you on how you plan for that. Coins, I have five. Still no monsters, so no negative points yet. So I have a total of 16 points on the round. So next we'll be moving on to fall, which will score C and D. All of these explore cards go back to the same deck. We add one additional monster. We shuffle them up. And we go on to the next one. So for this, for the fall scoring C, we'll be scoring those green ones for us. Again, they are completely surrounded on four sides. <clears throat> and then we'll be scoring the broken road for each complete diagonal that touches both the left side of your map and the bottom of the map. So I do hope, hope everyone in the chat is doing well today. If you're playing along, let me know how you're doing, what your score is currently. If you're not, tell me about your day, what you've been playing lately, or if there's any games you're interested on see, seeing being streamed at some point, let me know. I, I typically play Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern here on Twitch. I play solo games, some that you can play along with, or others that you can help me decide on what moves I'm making. Friday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern, I do unboxings, where I take, give chat a selection of games I have yet to open from my shelves. And they will tell me what to unbox. I'll unbox it live, tell you about the components, the quality, answer any questions you have about what is in the box. And I have about 50 to 60 of those games I need to unbox. So I'll unbox one or two of those a week. So I'll have a while before we get through all those games. Now I also join Chris, the charity board gamer, on Tuesday nights where we typically play D&D. &D. This week we will not be playing D&D &D because our DM is taking care of personal and mental health issues and has been busy. So we'll be playing a video game, I believe, either Overwatch or Left 4 Dead 2. And that is at 9 p.m. on Tuesdays. Thursday nights, the Charity Board Gamer does interviews with different people in the gaming industry and talks to them about how they got into gaming, their gaming story, and then talks about charities with them, charities they like to support. And then afterwards, we will play a game, typically on t Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia, of a board game because it's easier to do a digital game in these current times. But and that's typically, the interviews are typically at 7, and then the games are typically at 8.30, and I join him as a co-host on that as well. So, let's move on to the fall. The first card is going to be our first monster. This is the Goblin Attack. It is a three-line diagonal. So, starting in the bottom right-hand corner of your map, and then moving in a clockwise direction up along the edge of the map, and around the whole map, Shifting in one if you have to. You have to draw this. And then this will create negative point spaces on your map if you don't surround that monster. So what I do, I start in the bottom right corner as indicated until I can fully fill in that monster. Can't fit here, 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 but it can fit here. So you draw in the monster as shown now, we're playing by the solo rules with this. If you're playing multiplayer at, at a table with someone, you actually pass your your map to someone else at the table, and they get to draw the monster anywhere on your map, trying to mess with you. Now, any empty space next to that monster at the end of the round will be negative points, so I need to try to fill in all these spaces. Nice thing is, once a monster comes out, that same monster can't come out again because it's a one-time use. So, next card is the Treetop Village, the Elongated Z Green Forest Red Village option. 
So I'm going to work on getting more of my diagonals completed. Go with the greens because they can still score for me. Go down here. Go do this. And this also gives me several greens that are now completely surrounded. Okay, the next card is going to be the Hinterland String. It is our big V shape of either yellow farms or blue water. I'm going to use it to surround another mountain. And remember, we'll still be scoring A again at the end of the last season of winter, which scores you points for water or farms next to a mountain. Water is two, farms are one. So I'm making the most of this water as it shows up. Surround a mountain, get a coin. And we'll get to the next card. So again, we have our Rift Lands. It's a one by one of any terrain type of your choice shown. Again, it's not a mountain. You could do a monster if you chose or any of the other four. This season, we're looking for a total of seven or more. We're currently at a total of four. I'm going to, yes. I'm going for broke here, all or nothing. Let me use this green here in the middle right here. It's going to be filled in, guaranteeing at least one point on the tree tower. And hopefully I can fill in this space for diagonals later. Okay, next card up. Temple of Ruins. So your orchard is the L shape, green or yellow. So forest or farms has to go on top of ruins. Unless all of your ruins are already covered, then you can place any one by one, any terrain type except a mountain anywhere on your board. I get to place one anywhere I like, and I'm going to go full risky, continue with my plan. Green up here, work on my diagonal. Hopefully I can fill in this later. We're at a total of six, looking for seven or more. This may, most likely will be the last card, unless it's a monster. Yep, this will add us up to seven. This is our great river a choice of a one by three, water with the coin, or our W shape. wasn't the shape I wanted, but it might be the shape I need. I'm going to play it right. One by three water. This bottom might end up blocking myself out of other points, but that's at least a coin and another diagonal. Guaranteed. So that's a total of seven for the round for the season. We're going to go and score it. Any completely surrounded forest on four sides. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and not that one. So it's just ten. Three points for every com complete diagonal row, touching both the left and bottom. So we're just going to. What I like to do, I like to draw a light line down, down those diagonals that are complete. Two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. So seven times three is going to make 21 points for that. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coins. And now n negative points for any empty space next to a monster. Now, no diagonals, just the directly adjacent. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So 10 plus 21, 31, plus seven is 38, minus five is 33 for the round. Okay. So again, we're gonna shuffle the cards up, add one more monster. This is gonna go here. We'll be going for the one turn next, which is gonna be A and D. Now, this season is only six, so. It's likely we only see three cards, could see more. But make the most of every card you see now, because it's almost over. Okay, I think those are shuffled now. It's hard to know when it's a small deck. It's either completely shuffled or you shuffle it back to where it was. Okay, first card. It's going to be a monster. Okay, so this one has to start near the bottom left of your map. And then moving clockwise around the border. It's going to be the small T-shape. So let's follow on my map and I'll show you how. So starting here, and you move up the wall until the first location that it can be drawn in. And then if you can't draw it in this corner, you'd keep going around the whole map until in a clockwise direction. If you get all the way back to the same corner, you move in one and do the same thing. In this case, it does fit right here for me. Now, that does not add to the season total, but again, it is a monster that can give us negative points. So let's get the first card that is actually going to help, hopefully help us score. Okay, we found the Hamlet. You have two choices here. You either have the small V-shape with a coin, or you have that larger kind of two by two square with one sticking off of it, but no coin. Remember, these can be rotated, mirrored, however you choose on your map. So I'm going to attempt to go full on for my diagonals, push into this right here corner with that small V-shape and get myself a coin, block off some of the monster negatives at the same time. Hopefully I can continue fill in some of the other spaces for the diagonals. We're at a total of one, looking for six for the round. Okay, a Temple of Ruins. You all know what this means by now. And the Great River, a one by three with the coin. Or the W shape. Now, I'll confirm real quick, but I believe because we cannot draw either of these shapes, you cannot choose... At least personally, because I don't have a ruins left to draw onto. And I have to then instead of draw a one by one anywhere on my map. I'm not choosing the one by three with the coin. So I cannot get a coin because I'm not drawing on a ruin using that actual shape. Instead, it'll be a one by one anywhere on the map. Let me follow my lines real quick. It's open. Ooh, now the tough decisions happen. Either I complete a row, complete a row, or block some monster space. I think I'm going to complete a row in this instance. 
this one's going to be hard to fill in. So I'm going to choose, it won't matter what color I choose, I'm just going to go green to complete the diagonal, which I'll show you how it fills in at the end of the round. Total of two for the season, looking for six or more. Oh, another monster attack. This is what happens when we don't draw them early. They stack up and have a higher chance of coming out now. So this one is the Bugbear Assault. Starting in the upper right-hand corner, going clockwise until it fits. So in this case, we start in this upper right-hand corner. This is two, a two by one, separated by two by one with another two by one. So the filled in purple, it's gonna have a one by two between the two different rows of two by ones. The first place it can fit, starting in the right hand corner and moving down. So that means I have to fit it right here. So this could end up being a lot of negative points in the game. This is where with each piece that comes out, you add is it better to block a monster or add to the scoring potential? Next card, a one by one. Okay. Let's see. That one by one goes through that one. I think I'm going to fill in space right here to get another diagonal, guaranteed diagonal. I just like, like the look of that right, that spot right there. Feels like I did more with it. So we're still at a total of two for the season, looking for six or more. Okay, so we've gotten found the Forgotten Forest again. Either a diagonal two with the coin or the Z shape. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fill it in right here and here, the Z or the diagonal setup. Not the Z, the diagonal. Give myself a coin. And guarantee blocking at least one monster space and another diagonal at the same time. Okay, turtle of three, I'm looking for six. A ruins, we've seen these before, so we move on to the farmland. One by two with the coin, or the plus sign. In my case, it's a one by one of any terrain type on the board. So my best option is to start blocking some monster spaces. Actually, I can do, um, I think my better option is to use, I know I can score two points for next to the mountain. I'm going to just go next to the mountain right here. Okay, so we're currently at one, two, three, four for the season. Looking for six or more, so we keep it moving. And we found an or orchard. orchard. Uh, this is a total of two, so this will be the last card of the season and of the game. This is the L shape, a green forest, or a farm. I think no matter where I put it, the most I can make this shape worth is three points. Actually, no, I can make it worth four for me. So I'm going to go right up here, surround this mountain, 
block off at least one monster space and surround one more mountain for a coin. That being the last card, we're going to start scoring. So we're going to score the D diagonals first. And I have a couple more that I filled in. I'm going to draw them out for y'all. Because now these empty spaces do count. This filled in. It's another one. Just through this right here. And I believe, yep, right here. One, two, three, four. All the way down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times three is thirty points for my diagonals. Then we move back to the Mages Valley. Two points for every water space next to a mountain, and one point for every farm next to a mountain. So let's add up what we have here. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen times two is twenty-six for the water. Plus one, two, three. So let's verify one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, twenty-six, twenty-nine. How many coins do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But then I have quite a few negative points for spaces next to monsters that are empty. So it's gonna be one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Negative ten. Negated all my coins. Total of fifty-nine on the round. And then we add up the total for the whole game. Fourteen plus sixteen is thirty. Plus thirty-three, sixty-three. Plus fifty-nine. That's gonna be one hundred and twenty-two. So. In that case, be a total of 122 if I was playing against someone else. But if we want full solo rules, we'd actually take the points shown in the bottom right hand, card, hand corner of all these cards and subtract them from your score. So let's just see how well I did on that. 22 plus 16, that's 38, plus 17 is 55. Plus 24 is 79. I'll do that one more time to make sure I got that right. 22, 16, 38, 55, yep, 79. Which would put me at 43 for the game. So. Let's see what 43 is in the solo. Let's see what my title would be. Yeah, so in the solo mode, you have different levels depending on what your final total score. Subtracting all these. So let's go from low to high. If you had negative 30 or, or less, you'd be an oblivious ink drinker. We're nowhere near that. Negative 20 to negative 29, basically. A dim-witted doodler. Much better than negative 10. Inept assistant. We're not inept. Negative 5. Amateur assessor. Straight zero. Apprentice surveyor. We're better than that, even. If you got at least 10, you're a journeyman topographer. Or maybe you got 20 to be a master mapsmith. But if you got 30 plus, which... I got 43. You're a legendary cartographer. So, that was a perfect way to end the night. Because, indeed, Cartographers is a legendary game. An amazing flip and write that's very enjoyable, in my opinion. So, I do thank you for joining me. Playing along, if you did. Watching along. And, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. A wonderful Monday. And I also hope... That you have a wonderful week. So what I'm going to do now is figure out someone to raid. And we will go raid them. Spread the joy. So let me. Give me a second. Let me see who is on. And then we will forward on. The Twitch love.
of sharing the views. I do appreciate everyone who showed up tonight helping me get my, my Twitch viewership up as I, over the weekend I hit my 50 follower count. So once I get my viewership up, I can hit the next level of Twitch streamer of uh, being an affiliate, which will allow me to offer more things to all of y'all. So let's see who's on right now and who's playing different games. It reloaded on me. Let me see real quick. So it's not necessarily a board game. They're playing split screen Stardew, but Kentucky Fried Dice is on currently. Now, Kentucky Fried Dice helped with one of the first charity streams I did with the Charity Board Gamer, where we supported the Ronald McDonald House of the Bluegrass, where Kentucky Fried Dice lives and supports them a lot, so I want to support them back. So, thank you for joining me tonight. Let's get this raid going. Okay, we Fried Dice. See if this is going to work. So, thank you for joining me tonight. And as always, play games and spread joy.